Hey everyone, I'm Florian Mugala and you are watching Beats Basteln. Today I will demonstrate what a mastering engineer can do for you. Watch this video if you are already good at mastering yourself and because of that think that you don't need a mastering engineer. Or watch this video if you believe that an AI service could replace a mastering engineer because in those cases I think I will surprise you. Recently I made this poll which shows that most of you have not worked with a mastering engineer yet. A lot of you are also not interested apparently. I'm looking forward to find out if I can change your mind with this video or not. So let me know if anything I'm going to say in this video has challenged your opinion. In part 1 I set the scene with my free analyzer plugin CompView and my free compressor AP. This is Alain from the channel AP Mastering, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. He has built three mastering studios, had an acoustics consultancy company and manufactured acoustic panels in his past. But on YouTube he's mostly known for his controversial take on analog EQ and compressor plugins. In his videos he measured and compared a lot of effects and came to the conclusion that the difference in sound between them all is so small that it's not recognizable and thus don't matter. On Discord he told me about the way he learned the craft and concluded his work with the words If you work with me expect to have to change shit on your side. That caught my interest because obviously I wanted to know what kind of stuff would I have to change if I gave him some of my work. Would I have to make an EQ dip at 3.7k or would I have to throw the entire lead synthesizer out of the window? What kind of surprises am I in for? So I dropped my beat in the discord group and shot my rather simple mastering chain. What would a real mastering engineer do differently? I was glad he told me he liked the song, but I was even more excited to find out what he didn't like. Will it be something I also didn't like but just didn't realize? Or will it maybe be something completely offending? He offered me to send him kick, snare and the rest of the stems as individual tracks for a rough master. Unfortunately, due to the way I composed the song using a lot of audio bounces, there was no way to isolate the kick and snare completely. So I decided to split the track into break, percussion, snare tunnel and rest. Trust me, that was the most reasonable thing to do. Alain wasn't amazed by my experimental workflow excuse, but since he said that he mainly wanted to fix the snare transients, there was a certain chance he could squeeze it out of the snare tunnel track. He made two versions of my beat. Untitled has the snare transients fixed, and Untitled 2 makes sure the kick has more energy. Let's listen AB, my master and Alain's variations. This was my first reaction by the way, I love the massive low end and the width on the fuzzier synths felt amazing too, however I envisioned the song to have more focus on the juicy bass line, so I decided to try to work on the song some more myself and incorporate Alain's concepts on a deeper level. Alain agreed that my new version sounds much better than the one I made before. 
due to the new punch on the snare and bass. I concluded that the best thing about mastering engineers is that they can give you a new perspective on your sound. It's not just the technical knowledge, like knowing how to use effects, but more like a communicational service. Fresh ears are listening to your music with a completely different perspective on music in general and enrich your song by hearing its yet unheard potential. In the light of plugins and services like Isotope Ozone, it can easily appear like there is no need to hire a mastering engineer anymore. You can just hit listen and wait 10 seconds for the AI to figure out the most professional mastering chain. But the truth is, there is no most professional mastering chain. There are just infinitely many variations that would work, depending on your vision. But the AI can't ask you about your vision, at least not yet. AI mastering assistant services assume that mastering is a solely technical skill. If you only set some plug-in parameters up in the best way possible, the outcome will be the best too, right? But even if Ozone is giving you a great starting point as a mastering chain, it will never come back at you and say, you know what, the snare completely lacks a cool transient, go back to the mix first. That's why it doesn't replace a mastering engineer. And that's also why you can't always do everything on your own. Now you might be asking yourself, will I always let Elaine master my tracks now? No, I don't think so. Uh, because it's just too much fun to do it all myself, honestly. But did I learn something from this experience? Absolutely yes. It is crucial to listen to your music from many different perspectives. And if you don't want to hire a mastering engineer to do that for you, you have to take your time and listen to your tune in many different situations to learn about all the various ways it can feel to hear it. All right, that's all from me for now. Let me know what you think of mastering engineers now considering that they bring more to the table than just knowing how to use effects very well.